Alright, well, we're at least recording. And now... We're live. What are you drinking? Live, is, that, live. is that coffee? Yeah, coffee. Next <laughs> drink. That's not coffee, is it? That's two coffee. <laughs> Great radio. A little late in the evening for that. Never. I could fall asleep like 10 minutes after this. Yeah, yeah, not when you're normally asleep, going to sleep like right now, and then you gotta stay up for another two hours. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> we're here at podcast you? number 58. Can you believe it, Nick? Almost 60. Yeah. It's gross. Gross. We're getting so old. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is getting so old. Uh... <laughs> For number 50, we are here with Anthony Acker. Hey. <clears throat> what? Is Ike, can you hear Ike talking? Yeah. That's all right. I just took my daughter out of my bedroom because she's four months old. So I figured she'd probably start screaming. Oh, yeah, she's going to crank it up for the show. Yeah. I can't hear her. She's right next to me. I got headphones in. So I, you guys, I just saw reactions. Yeah, the mic. Uh, oh, I guess the, the headphones themselves kill it enough for you. Yeah. But the mic I could hear pretty well. Good. So what's up? You ride uh, snowmobiles? Yeah, I ride sleds, bikes, and I guess sometimes I go gay for pay and ride quads too. Uh -oh. <laughs> I did not know this. <clears throat> yeah, I've actually, I actually for years rode quads way more than dirt bikes. Oh jeez! Oh jeez! Uh, yeah, my cousins all raised quads. Um, there's my my two brothers actually. The cousin that I work for actually, him and his brother raced like B class quads. And the thing about quads is like they're super expensive to do, do anything with. You know, you buy a dirt bike, you can put it on track right out of the box. And the quads, you sticking tons of money in them to even make them you know rideable really. And then you bend stuff all the time. Yeah, and arms are. and fucking axles, yeah, and axles, bars and shit. axles are usually the thing that you know take a beating. But yeah, if you've been an axle on a dirt bike, then you're probably oh, you, you're probably dead around in a wheelchair or something. So you're in. I know we went over this, but I don't think we were live, right? You're in Wisconsin, right? Like way yeah. up there. Yeah, like if you look at Wisconsin, I'm like three quarters of the way up. That explains the quads. Or no? Mm, I, well, in this immediate area, <laughs> yes. The funny thing is, is most people around here ride quads, but they all ride like, you know, your ten-year-old like 400 DXs that are just complete trash, you know. And you take a quad like I had, you know, it has 25 grand stuck in it, and you put it on Craigslist, and people are like, oh, I'll give you three grand for it. And you're like, uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen. But yeah, that's every quad's worth that. That's how What's the stuff is with anything. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, people just lowball you like, you know, this thing's got Fox shocks and every <laughs> part you could bolt on it. And, you know, they got gem for any extras driving around in their diesel pickups. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you got that done by you guys, but, man, it's the diesel thing is just ridiculous. That's, that's, we're in the Midwest. That's everywhere. Rolling car. Uh, that's oh, yeah, Roman I'm car based this. <laughs> you know, I I have no problem with owning diesel. I'm actually gonna buy a diesel uh, truck myself, but I'm not gonna you know be all douchey about it like most people. Get a megaphone a exhaust. Why don't you get a megaphone exhaust? <laughs> like yeah, I'm not kidding you. I saw someone just recently. I'm not shitting you. They're the can on the back of their exhaust was like a foot around. I'm like, what the hell are you doing with that? <laughs> That's like, the most ridiculous thing I've ever saw. Sounds like Ed with his stacks. Yeah, but that's like Ed's mohawk. He, he plays it off. It fits him like 100%. <laughs> it's true. Did you see Ed riding this weekend up in uh, Michigan Scott's, somewhere? Yeah, he was at Scott's uh, Sick Air thing up there. In Did you go to that? I was supposed to. Scott wanted me to come up there, but I had something come up, so I never actually went. But I was just going to go help him out with the show and stuff. But yeah, I didn't get like up there. Some, uh, some serious yeah. landings and shit to put together. 
It's basically like the Nitro Circus style thing where the you know landings are super huge. You know, he Scott's got an airbag, so he's got stuff like that. So yeah, you can do that. You know, but it takes a lot of equipment to pull something like that off. Yeah, it looked cool. But I only saw like a uh, screen grabs that Rossi posted him doing a front flip. Yeah, Same. I didn't really see much about it either. I actually just talked to Scott the other day because I phone because I Craigslist a lot trying to find you know either <laughs> ramps or whatever. But I found an entire stadium worth of turf for free. Really? What type? Yes. Is it turf or is it uh, field grass? Well. It, it's the stuff with the rubber on the back. It's like 3,500 pounds of roll. Oh, so you got to figure out how to ship that shit. Yeah, actually, Scott said he's going to get his log truck and we're going to go get it, but we he's been kind of play, playing phone tag with the guy. Well, actually, one of my buddies, Kurt, who lives in Minnesota, he actually just went and picked up, what was it, I think 50 rolls. His brother's got a semi and stuff, so we went and picked up 50 rolls, and some of them... Uh, for me, just sitting there, but if Scott goes up there and we got to go past here anyways to get back to his place, we'll just drop a couple rolls off at my house, so that'll be pretty nice. It's funny because random people may be listening to this and they're like, what? But, <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> with that? <laughs> but, I hate mowing grass so yeah, much. <laughs> he's just going to roll it out in his yard. No. <laughs> it, yeah. so, it's, but they're doing white lines all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ride... Uh, you know, dirt bikes even. I actually helped test that for Feld. Um, really? The turf, yeah. We went to um, uh, arena in Missouri. I want to say it was in um, Kansas City. And uh, they had um, AstroTurf down over top of the ice. And there was, there was four of us. Me, uh, Gary Robertson, Jason Rowe, and uh, Greg Hartman. And uh, so we went out and rode on the turf just on top of the ice, and they're, we're, like, just riding around, and they go, you know, try and really race around it. Try and tear the stuff right. up, see if it rips. So we're like, all right. So we just start hammering all four of us doing, like, flat track around the floor, and we're just like, this shit is awesome. This is, like, the tackiest <laughs> thing you could ever ride on. And it never... It was on the ice. Yeah. Huh? It was on the ice? It was on top of the ice in the arena. What they were basically trying to do was get rid of... That's how all those shows were towards the end. They were getting trying to get rid of the time of melting the ice down and then refreezing uh, it because they still have... So to just putting it right on top. Exactly. And that's how they ran our shows. They just put the um, AstroTurf on top of the ice and we just played like that or uh, rode like that. So it actually was worked yes. out really well and it saved them like a day of thawing the ice and a day of freezing the ice so they didn't have their how thick the is that ice actually how thick is it is that ice like a foot thick no yeah. it's like four inches maybe oh really um, that's what he said that's crazy because like you know, here in wisconsin you know when the you know the lake speeds we get four feet of ice yeah, that's a lake though. This is just a, um, yeah. That's... So this is just a concrete floor with a thin layer of. And then they just ice on top. And then they just freeze it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's only. But like... you think it would just be thicker than that? But because I always thought, like going back to the quad thing we were talking about earlier, um, I would because they actually do it. I've heard around here. I've never actually watched it. They do ice races indoors See that? and hockey. Oh yeah. Yeah, apparently, like, I've only watched ice racing, I've actually done it myself, I've been on ice, um, on quads and stuff, but I've heard they actually do it in stadiums around here, but I've never actually seen That's it in the stadium, crazy. I've only seen it on the ice, but I don't know if you've ever ridden <clears throat> anything on the ice, like a dirt bike or anything, well, it's so insane. after lunch, they, during, we went to lunch, they rolled all the AstroTurf up, and we took all our wheels off and gave them to somebody, and he took them to a dealership, and they changed them for ice spikes and brought them back. And yeah. uh, we had the ramp set up on the ice with rubber mat up the face of the takeoff and AstroTurf on the landing. And then it was just ice. So I actually, when um, they were out, I took all the tools for the front wheel, because I knew it, you know it takes longer to put your front wheel on. So right. as soon as they come back, I grabbed... Uh, 
Gary Robertson was there, and he was, I was holding the tool, and he goes, uh, he goes over to the toolbox, and he turns around, he's looking for, like, the 10, or, or the, um, yeah, the 10 and the 22, <clears throat> and he's looking around, and he sees I'm holding them, and he's like, oh, you bastard, I had the same idea, so he took, he grabbed all the stuff for the back wheel, and, uh, I threw my front wheel on, he put his back wheel on, and we swapped tools. And then, so then technically I'm the first person ever to jump on ice because I blasted <laughs> straight out there and then just turned and hit the ramp. And then Gary came right out behind me and he was like, you bastard, I wanted this, I wanted to do. So I was going to hook up on that rubber mat. Yeah, oh yeah, you were like, spin, 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 like not bad. You can, um, the ice bikes do work pretty good. You can. Yeah, well, I don't know if you've ever like ridden like on ice, like, racing or anything like i've never actually raced but i've been on a you know circle tracks and stuff and uh my cousins had quads all decked out for it but uh, if you get a quad on ice and you it's all studded it hooks better than on blacktop it would be ridiculous it's actually scary because you can hold that like a you know 450 quads wide open around the ice and you it's pulling so many g's it's absolutely insane it's fun as hell but it's it's scary it's just to hold it wide open in fifth gear is ballsy you know you're going how, how 70 80 miles get? an hour around there huh how chewed up does the ice get oh pretty bad like actually one time uh i was well me and my cousin were on quads both of his and it was starting to get like springtime and we we're just going across the lake and it, I come around the racetrack, it's like, oh, it's still here. And it was like, bruh, you know, r- ripping around the corner. There was like 10 feet of open water on the inside of the corner. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> but that's because, you know, it got so dug out. It, you know, if the ice is four feet thick, it could be, you know, a foot down, you know, just shred it and throw it all to the outside. Yeah, it turns into like regular tracks at that point. <laughs> yeah, and then, it, you know, then it looks like, you know, like a stock car track or somewhere. It's all angled. Spanked. Yeah, it's really cool how it works, but I don't know. Most people who race quads around here are kind of douchey, so I don't talk to them. <laughs> so Just her right there. Yeah, I only talk to the freestylers. Four feet of ice. I feel like you guys must have ice until like. Oh May. yeah, we do. I was yeah, gonna say, they do ice racing like straight right in Indiana, just like a half hour from. Here. They barely do it that long. I know they get like a couple feet, but we definitely don't afford it because it's like usually never gets frozen enough. Or it, by the time they do it, it's January and then it's over with by the end of February. That's how we are normally, but early this year we had um, negative temperatures for like two weeks straight, just about. And we got like a good ass base of ice. But I mean, we were only uh, playing hockey. But the first time we skated, Dude, it was like an inch and uh, three quarters of ice. No, fuck yeah. that. <laughs> no, I, I won't go on that much ice. That's, no. I'd have if I could swim point. better, I probably would, but. Well, it was only like, uh, it's only, it's right in, my friend was renting a house on this lake, but this was like a little inlet. So it's only like a foot oh. and a half deep or two feet deep, maybe. That's one thing. What but, if you, you know, sit under that two inches of ice in that foot? And, and then you're, you're just crack. crunched down, you're just smashed <laughs> against the ice. You, you can't then you break get, it. then you die. I thought I'd break two inches of ice. I can't. This is where I die. Well, there's a lake that we went to last year. Uh, the girlfriend's mom and her are certified divers. Um, this lake is the deepest lake in the state of Wisconsin. If you want to look it up, if you ever get bored, it's called Lake Wazee. It's 230 feet deep, I think. Wow. Yeah, it's man-made. It was a copper was mine. It, yeah, it's man-made. It was a aliens. copper mine. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but they kept digging it deeper and deeper, and they were. I was reading like a couple months ago after we went there because it's crystal clear. Like you can see, you know, probably like sixty feet down. It's ridiculous. It's awesome. But I can't swim at all. So we went over to the boat landing, <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, I can swim, but like, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So. We went over to this boat landing, and, and I she's teaching me how to snorkel, and I've never done it before, so um, I go over, and I'm, like, put my head down in the water, and 
just like cruising along and then I look and there's this like 200 foot drop to my left and I'm like freaking out I'm like screw this this is nuts if you can't swim and you're looking at 200 feet of water below you yeah uh-uh. that's what sets it off I think so you would get like to a, a point where you would stop sinking we're not yo, that dead yeah you when you die you float <laughs> back to the top <laughs> yeah, eventually. How does that you can work? Go. Why do you die and then float and you can't float when well, you're cause alive? Well, because the water makes it more buoyant and that's in you. Or it, Why do you equalizes, it equalizes, I guess. I don't know. Who knows? You're just making shit up. None of us know. Yeah, you just like, nah, it's the sun, the gravitational pull of the sun. <laughs> to your, to the soul, your soul is heavy. Your soul is heavier <laughs> than your heart. Just when your soul leaves your body, that's it, your body <laughs> It just leaves you at the top. It's got to go. Yeah, actually, like, I know it's completely off subject. The last time that you guys were going to have me on here was the night I had my daughter, so Paul oh, Dawson and I came on that night. Lame excuse. Yeah, Clint, Clint messaged me, and he's like, oh, you want to come on? I'm like, my daughter's going to be here in, like, 15 minutes, so probably not. And that's why you bailed on us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's long to forgive you for that. Lame. Love <laughs> it's, it's been a while. So how is your daughter? She's healthy? She's good? Yeah, well, perfect. Absolutely That's perfect. Oh, uh, now you guys can talk about your kids and your Yeah, hair's her clay gets lost. <laughs> oh, good kid talk again. You want to talk about hair too, Nick? <laughs> hair? Hair? <laughs> Hair and get sunburnt and stuff like that. Oh, you might get sunburnt. You're palish. Oh, look at me I'm now. Sunburnt. I'm already burnt, so I'm good. I got roasted a little bit the other day. See, we can all unite on that front. But I have the Italian, yeah, we... so at least once I get burnt, then I'm good. Yeah. I know usually once I get burnt, I'm usually pretty good, but that first time is pretty rough. No, I get burnt, and then next week I get, I get burnt again when the first one wears off. <laughs> Just a constant well, cycle. I have some Native American in me, so that's probably why. <laughs> well, that's, you got free college then. I don't think I, I don't know if I have that much. Maybe. It only takes like my, a, my, If you something. look at my grandma, you can definitely tell. Yeah. So your grandma could get free yeah. college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like 92, so or 92. Everybody's grandma get free college. It's never too late. Never they get, they all get free community college. They just show up with roller book bags and <laughs> ask what what's the homework for tonight. Hey, and nobody can bitch because they already paid for it. Right. <laughs> yeah, in like 1960s dollars. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I paid a dollars for college. It doesn't matter. The government's been loaning that money out or whatever they do and making more money on it, making interest on no. it, taxing us. This kid's not, you know, this kid's going to the circus, aren't you, Ike? No? You don't want it? That's the plan we had. I said no college, circus. Circus. Come on, Nuss, are you in your garage? Kind of, yeah. Or is that, or is that like no, a room? that's his studio. Yeah, it's the studio. It's like the back of my garage has like another room. A studio. Oh. That's heated, so when it's cold, I can hide back here. It's perfect. Studio. And now it's hot. It is heated. It's hot up. There's not a whole lot of airflow. Yeah. It's, I my just had my AC cranking all the way. Because my bedroom's upstairs. And uh, for whatever reason, it obviously, you know, heat rises. But this room is the hottest room in the whole house. So I just turned on the central air and, and let it rip before I came in here. And I'm just chilling in my bed, so... The upper rooms are always hot. Oh, yeah. This, room, older this room's the worst. Yeah, it's older, but it's all remodeled and everything, so... <laughs> it's actually the girlfriend's dad's house. Yeah. I live on... I, well, he owns 600 acres, so... Oh, shit. Yeah, he's you a do all farmer. The he's got... you want. <laughs> <laughs> right? What was I... What was Guter's thing about quads? <laughs> Gutier? Yeah, I actually like I know them, but I I've seen them like around, you know. But I was actually talking to to Derek, his brother, and uh, about getting on his tour that he does an MX vs ATV thing. Yeah. But you know, so far it really hasn't you know come to uh, fruition. So, but you know, it'd work out pretty good, I guess, if 
you know, because they're down right here, really, like three hours. What's that? Go down a ride with them. I know I should. I talked to him about it, and then it just kind of never really went anywhere. It's like whatever. But if I like go anywhere, it's usually to, like to Scott's place or uh, to my my buddy Kurt's building that spot over in Minnesota. So. Well, you gotta but, get in with the Gutierrez boys because they're quad <laughs> gods. Right. No, I I don't even have a quad anymore. I got a a dirt bike and a sled, so I'll just stick to that. It's it's hard, you know, maintaining and doing all three. It's just yeah, no shit. It's to be too much work. It's hard to do two, but I wouldn't even want to. I feel like they're so different. I know with me, I think I don't think I'd be able to jump back and forth like that, confidence wise, at least. Maybe I could, but I think I would just be mentally like. Uh, have you I mean you guys both live with your snow like have you ever guys ever ridden like race sleds we don't sort? have enough snow for no I think last Colorado. last snowmobile I rode was like a Polaris something in like you know 2000 No, oh, yeah well <laughs> I tested I have one a, in a parking lot this year they haul ass yeah well yeah my dad actually used to drag race um, snowmobiles and one of my Distant Cousins holds the world record right now. The hell is it? It's like... In like a thousand feet, he did like 180-something, which is ridiculous. It was yeah, like... that's insane. Maybe somebody... Some, I think actually some Canadian beat it last last year. Maybe it was the year before he beat it. I think it was like 186 miles an hour and a thousand feet. But well, think his about name's Kyle like the, uh, the Maddo distance jump with uh, Levi the Valley. Like, his run yeah, was so yeah. much shorter, and he still went, like, 20 feet further. Yeah. This snowmobiles have so much horsepower, though, you yeah. know? Like, I broke my back at Scott's house in October of 16. Um, but, wow. you know, because, you know, I had confidence in how much horsepower it had. Well, once I shorted, the, I actually shorted his foam pit and broke my back. But, you know, I, so I was expecting that power to be there, and it just wasn't, you know? So, uh, you know, they got like 130 horsepower, but I got to grab a beer. He just got to You got to get a little guy to grab you one. I know. She's only four months old, so she's got a little... She's got time. Well, she little ways crawl. to go. Dude, I was just looking up snowmobile thousand foot records. Was it... His name's... His... My cousin's... Or his, his distant cousin, actually. His name's... Uh, sorry. Uh, Kyle Schiltz. His snowmobile is called Blood Money. <laughs> I like how snowmobiles and quads. Clint, does that mean you talking about that? Like why they have names? And dirt bikes are just like maybe it wasn't like YZs. Snowmobiles and four wheelers all have like I don't know Phaser, Banshee, and all. Oh we yeah, that's true. It's, it's just a pure race sled, so it's like a full custom mod. But his race name is blood money but that thing is it's 600 horsepower gosh and it's all just to a track which is that's like pure power yeah oh yeah it, it's if you find it just look maybe it's on his instagram i know i found a bunch of shit now i'm in the world of snowmobiles <laughs> don't do open it, up man. a whole new world for you yeah <laughs> don't do it it is, isn't it? You don't want to have to start buying your kids sleds. I'm closing this page. This tab's getting yeah, closed right now. You better get out of there. He's like, I already got my eye on one, so. He's like, those it's things just... look sick. <laughs> <laughs> I buy one and then we're guaranteed no snow. That's how it works. For, yeah. Yeah, it's hit or miss here. I think you're probably a little bit further north than me, Nick, but little bit, but I'm in a weird spot. Like, if you go just east of me, like, Indiana gets different snow because of the lake. But I don't. Sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't. Well, My brother said Indiana is, like, the biggest dump hole you've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Illinois, I have, too. Yeah, I actually have relations that live there, but I've never been down there. Sorry, that's just, I feel like it's, like, Ohio. Ohio? Yeah. I know I lived there for a summer. Who did? I did. Why? When? I was working. And I got to, there was a couple tracks that I got to ride down there. I was in Columbus. 
They're all a, they're all a boring blur. Oh my gosh, he's such a negativity oh. spreader. <laughs> every, time, every time I know I was a boring blur to me. He hates it. It's all, you've heard the flyover comments. <laughs> oh yeah. Actually, when Clint messaged me to, today, I, I was listening to the Bruce um, Cook one. And I just like was driving and I looked down at it. And I'm like, well, you know, it's just weird, like a weird vortex that I was in. Like, because I was like listening to that and I looked at his message and I'm like, wait, like it didn't make sense at first. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Is he texting me from the past? Yeah, What's that's kind of what it was. It's like, what the hell? It was just like, what, what are the odds? So, what do you, uh, what's your gripes with the show? <laughs> I don't really have any. Right. Other than Nick cuts out half the time. Ooh. That's my thing, man. That's my, uh... Yeah, he's just like, I, later. And then he'll just text gimmick. me. He's like, can't get to work. <laughs> <laughs> then he doesn't come back. I have a short attention span. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Do you guys hear my, my thing cutting out right now? It's the no, charm of the show. I'm <laughs> just fucking with you. He's like, uh, but yeah, like uh, I always known who like you guys were, but I just obviously have never, you know, met you personally. But you know, I know quite a few of you. Uh, I follow Clint forever. Uh oh. Now you're breaking up. Look at I'm trying to steal my style. That's my thing. Yeah. You, hey, listen. You can't just bow out early. Yeah, you can't take my my tricks. I'm broke. Breaking up, huh? Yeah, now I'm stuck talking to Clint for the next hour. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, everything looks good on my end. I don't know. <laughs> well, of course, you're live in person. Isn't that weird? How well, when the I can see you. The internet stops and you're I, like, I can still move. I don't get it. Why can't you <laughs> hear me? <laughs> I don't feel physically frozen. I don't have <laughs> feel frozen. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. There you go. You're but back. Yeah, no, I fo followed him from, or Clint from, you know, the freestyle, you know, East days, but. We all did. Uh, Clint has a lot of stalkers. I, yeah. Here's the thing. It's like people ask if I'm famous. They don't anymore. But when I was at shows, they go, <laughs> are you famous? Right? And I'm like, if you personally know everybody that thought you were cool at one point, you're not fucking famous. And I'm pretty sure right. I personally know anybody that was, in, like, uh, that was impacted by my videos. I feel like I know every one of them. Yeah. But he's not afraid to act like he doesn't know you if he bumps into you in public. <laughs> Hey, I do the same thing. I'll be friends with someone on Facebook, and then it's like, uh, I don't feel like talking to that person when I see <laughs> Damn, now it's out there. Oh, so good, I guess. You just know but you're yeah, at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I listen to podcasts. I mean, it's weird because I feel, you know, obviously I don't personally know you, but I know this world, you know, really, really well. So it's like sometimes I feel more, you know, more connection talking to freestyle guys than, you know, people about other things, you know, like families. Like, you know, I sit, can sit down here and talk to you, you know, and mention somebody that most people have no idea who I'm talking about. Or, you know, like the turf thing we were talking about earlier, like people don't make that connection. You know, you guys instantly pick it up, you know, so it's. Yeah, one of those deals. I mean, I think that all my best friends and the people I'm really close to don't even live near me. You know, yeah. that's who I relate to most is the guys that I rode with and traveled around mm -hmm. with and stuff like that. And right. I think, like you said, yeah, like you talk on a different level when you, you know, I've told people, I had a friend, we went to this party, and then he introduces me to this guy and goes, hey, Clint rides too or whatever. So I listened to this dude t for two hours about how he raced the amateur class on a KX250. <clears throat> and I'm like, all right. So then I took him to this track that I rode at. And the first thing I see when I see him is he has his kidney belt on backwards. And I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, all right. So then I ride, I go, I'll ride a lap or two on the track. I said, and then if you want, get your bike or whatever, hop in. 
So I do two laps and jump everything on the track. And I come back over and he's just like, I don't, I don't ride like that. Like, I'm not going to jump any of that stuff. And I'm like, told my friends after that, don't ever tell anybody that I ride dirt bikes. <laughs> yeah. Because we had, it, we had a track. If they really tunnels. ride, I will know them. Right. We had a track. Well, you'll know just talking to them. And there's this double double section, and it was, you know, it was pretty long, but the jumps weren't that big. And it's actually my cousin's cousin, if that makes sense. He comes over and he's driving this like piece of junk, you know, you know wadded out quad. Comes over and and he goes, "Hey, can I ride the track?" My cousin's like, "Yeah, I'll give her if you want." So my cousin's like, "Well, I'll go around it first and I'll show you what needs to be jumped." And it was a double double section. It was probably like the first one was probably like 30, 40 feet, and the next one was probably even shorter, just the way it was set up. And he goes over and doubles it on his, his race quad. And he's like, oh, my God, you're nuts. There's no way I'm jumping that. <laughs> he thought every jump, was the, every single was a jump. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so it would have been like a five-foot jump. It was to him. Like, every single was yeah, a jump that, to him. Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the type of people that are around here that they jump a five-foot jump. They're like, oh, that was badass. But that's 90% mm -hmm. of America. Like, here's the thing. Yeah. I don't think that I'm like really that good or ever was, but if you think of it in the percentage of people in the world that have done backflips and for the amount of time as I have, it's like very, very small, you know, but right. you always look at the, I always look at the people better than me and think I suck, you know, like, <laughs> so well, that's just it. You, you can do it from more than yourself on a level. And try to figure out where am I versus these guys, and that's probably like the wrong way to go about it. But I mean, like, cause I, my brother used to ride bulls and stuff, so, um, you know, being in that world and then being in the motocross world, I kind of got to know like different types of people. And you know, you go ride a bull, like, say that's not very crazy or rank, as they always call it. Um, and someone would be like, oh my god, you're, that's nuts, and you're like, that's the lamest bull out here, you know. And people just think of it on different terms and different levels than yeah. we think. We think, you know, like I was up at Scott's place and I was watching Joff Gaskin throw front flips. And, you know, to me, like, yeah, that's pretty cool and it's pretty, you know, pretty awesome. But, you know, I don't, like, geek out completely about it, you know. Cause yeah, it's you're just, you know, it. Yeah, you just kind of get used to that, being in the atmosphere. And, then, you know, it kind of is what it is, you know, but... Um, so it's kind of weird, like, oh, you know, but you're crazy for doing that. Well, maybe, but I don't think it's See, that crazy. Here's, you know? where, here's where the people that you're surrounded with, like, people make the um, just blanket statement, surround yourself with people that are on the same mission, which sounds good, but here's what it actually is. Surround yourself with people that are doing this thing for a living, and that are actually learning new tricks and progressing because one, seeing those things happen, one, knowing people personally that are doing stuff like that brings it down to a personal level and a more realistic level. Right. You only see people on TV and videos and magazines that makes them bigger than life and you're like, can't relate to it at all. Two, right. just being around their attitude of not saying stuff like that. Oh, that can't be done. You can't do this. It's like that's how the people that you live with normally. But when you get around good riders or a big group, it's like I'm going to jump that first. Not is it possible? Right. It's like shit. Yeah, yeah it's possible. I mean, I'm going to jump it first, and then I'm going to you know do whatever on it. <clears throat> yeah, because like people I know personally, like relation or whatever, they just they think probably because you're small, from a small town or whatever, that you're never going to get anywhere. And I've hung out with some of the coolest dudes ever. I mean, I've hung out with professional bull riders and, you know, top freestyle motocross riders and all that stuff. And it's like, it's not that far away. Like, but people put it, you know, in this in this glass bulb and say, you can never touch that. You can obtain that because you're from here or from there. And my story is different than yours. And, you know, I you can do anything you really want. I mean, yeah. you can't. You just gotta put the work I mean, in, that's all it is. Me being here, 
I mean, you know, that's like, it's pretty wild because, you know, obviously knowing who, you know, you guys were for forever and, you know, here I am, you know, if I wouldn't have pushed this and I would have just said, screw that, I'm going to, you know, do whatever, you know, then I wouldn't be sitting here with you guys, so. But so here we are, drinking. So here Probably we are, drinking. Be drinking on the <laughs> But yeah, I actually just talked to, well, I think it was last year I talked to Rich Kearns up here. He was doing a, uh, the Freestyle MTX tour or whatever that is. And he's done now. He's done. He's yeah, done. that, that I, I wish I would have known that. Like, I wish you would have told me that. Like, I was chilling with him for a while and it started raining. So we rolled up the, um, what well, must have been turf or whatever and then put it away. And so I hung out with him for a little while and talked to him and his fiance or whatever she is so but yeah rich is super cool dude it's crazy how you can bump into people that like do what we do not know them like I, there's people i picked up of like all right i'll take you to the show with me and then they're gonna ride too it's like i never met them and then you have a right. 10 hour ride and you just talk the whole time well, the hilarious people. part is my cousin my cousin had no idea who he was you know obviously i did but he goes up to rich and he's like oh you must be pretty good huh and he's like, yeah, Rich is like, my face is on the side of the bus. <laughs> so uh, I'm like, yeah, you, you don't know who Rich is. But, yeah, Rich is pretty cool about it. Now he's off the, uh, he's off the grid again. Kind of. Yeah. Unless you're in the wine wine country of Temecula. We're just drinking. That, that bamboozy thing looks pretty cool. I kind of want to check that out. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Clint says he's gonna fly us out there and, and do a bamboozy tour. Yeah, everyone that's ever been on the show, I'm gonna fly all of us out there. Everybody. And we're all. He's gonna, 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 gonna get his jumbo, his jumbo jet. I'm gonna. We're gonna all get on my personal jet. I'm gonna stop all around the country and pick everybody up. And we'll just. He's not gonna fly over the flyover states. He's actually gonna. I'm gonna land. I'm gonna touch. He's stopping him. him. He's gonna, gonna him break the rules. States. He's gonna dip down for a minute. Touchdown. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. On the way home, come on. On, on, hey, on the way home, you guys are parachuting. Hey, that's, that's the only way I would do it. <laughs> I watched my co my brother and my cousin do that a couple years ago. That's pretty dope, watching people jump out of a plane. That's that's some next level. Why didn't you jump out of the plane? Yeah, why did you jump out? I don't remember why I didn't. I didn't. There is a reason. I don't remember, but yeah. He was in the like, back of the well, plane he's... vomiting? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, actually, the one that's right here, it's called Skydive Lake Wasota, which is like a town near here, is the only one, I guess, in the United States that will actually let you jump out by yourself the first time. I don't know if that's true or not. It's not, true. But, it's not the only one because my <laughs> ex jumped out of a plane by herself first time. She just had to take some yeah. extra like classes or something. Yeah, that's yeah, what I did. That I was think my this, graduation present. Me and my dad I did think that. It was night. like a six-hour class, and then they jumped. It was, it was pretty awesome. But my, my brother's uh, was in the army and stuff, so you know it was pretty gnarly for him. But you know he rode bulls and stuff, so jumping out of the air, uh, airplane was just like the next thing. So yeah, just the next uh, logical yeah, step. Yeah, he, he yeah he rode bulls, and then he, um, you know, got into you know he was always into motocross and just kind of. Tried all these different things, my, you know, pretty cool watching jump out of the airplane. That's that's pretty gnarly. I, I would give anyone credit who does that because I would rather jump a dirt bike 100 feet than do that. That's thing yeah. is, that's mostly an unrealized like danger. You do have a pretty long time unless you have some catastrophic failure of both of your shoots. Most people are fine. Like, yeah. do, do you know anybody? That has crashed a uh, parachuting jump? No, because no. they're probably dead. So you know plenty of people that have crashed. But you also don't know them. Like, you don't get any glory if you die. It's like, oh, another, in the, another number. In the 40 year history of that place, I think they have one, like, minor incident. Exactly. Think years. about the history of Scott Murray's place. How many people have been hurt there? Me? <laughs> I knocked <laughs> myself people, but dingy on a jump over. I was. I was probably one of the last one. We did yeah, the, I um, enjoyed myself up there. We did an FMX East Challenge or a Moto X Challenge there, and then I did a flip neck, and my other foot come off, and then I just 
jump through my handlebars and why did yourself? Yeah, it wasn't any good. I I was fine. I walked away from that one. A month later, we did another um, Moto X challenge, and I was doing underflips after the show was over. Both of these accidents were after the show was over. The whole event was over. We were one just, more lap. One more. Just one more. Yep. One, one more. That's the omen. That's for me. If I say one more, I crash. Oh, after that's everybody. <laughs> so I don't. I don't say one more. I just get off my butt. Yeah, you have to either stop or commit to a bunch more. But I think if you're thinking that already, you might as well just clip it. Pull up. That's why I do five laps, and that's it. <laughs> I always say, I'm going to go do eight, and then I do five every time, that's it. I'm good for about three. It depends on how no, fast I actually, you're talking about. It's a warm-up lap, uh, a speed lap, and then a cool-down lap. And you're done. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I actually I like wrote a track for the first time in, like, probably five years like what was it last week no last weekend or two weekends ago my buddy built a, a place over here and i'm actually gonna put my freestyle ramps and stuff out there but the, yeah it was you know i went out there and i only jumped one one decent jump because i you know i still you know it happened in 16 so it went through 17 you know my back's still pretty destroyed so was that at murray's yep i shorted it I was jumping in the foam pit and I came up short and hit the foam pit wall. Oh my gosh. Yeah, pretty much the worst way you could crash. Yeah. So How, how I, broken was it? No, you could have been upside down and landed on the wall. Well, yeah, that was it. I was I, I came in slow and I You're going for a slow. flip? Well, I was warming up. This was the first jump of the day. So I yeah. just came in and I started on my sled and Scott, well, I came up to it and I was about to jump in it. And then Scott like went like this and like cut me off, and then he wanted me to come up and sign papers because I hadn't done that yet. I had completely grabbed my friend and broke it. So yeah, I just <laughs> kind of like broke concentration, and I walked up and you know he's got that like Connex box under that landing, and I went up there and I like signed papers or whatever, and no big deal. Got back on my sled and it was already kind of like in the corner, and I was just like looking at it. I was like, yeah, I should be able to make that. So I fired it up. And I came in slow, you know, but the thing's got 130 horsepower. So, you know, I should easily be able to make it in the foam pit at 75 feet. Well, it, I might knew my jetting was close, but apparently wasn't close enough. And it just came off the lip, brought, and just whack right into the foam pit wall. And I pushed the foam pit wall in like three feet. That's why I think it was long. What's yeah, that? Yeah, fuck that. I cleared that thing. That's why I think it was long. Yeah, I know. <laughs> is there any if video you on this? overshot that foam pit, well, there actually is, but oh Scott's God. son had his finger halfway. You probably oh. know it. Scott's son had his finger halfway over the lens. Like, you oh. can hear the entire thing. You can see me take off, and then you can hear me go off the ramp, and then you can hear smack, and then pretty much ended. But he had his finger, like, half over the screen, dude, so I was like... Uh. And my girlfriend didn't get her phone out in time because apparently she didn't think I was going to go even though I was So do you up. have that? What's that? Do you have that footage? The video? Yeah. No. I so didn't, it's probably on her old phone. You know, it's been a year and a half now or whatever. It was October of 16, so. But yeah. I, uh, you know what I sucks? Like, myself. When you get ready to do shit, like you're getting psyched up, you don't want to be like, hey, start taping because then it's like you're setting it up for a yeah. crash or something. You just expect yeah, everybody just, like, just fucking start taping. Because I'm going to do figured, it when I get the urge. As soon as I fired up my sled, that everyone is going to be on point and ready. You know, like, you're not gonna, you know, it's not like you're going to ride around for 20 minutes until you jump in the phone pit. You know, you're going to do it right away. Well, yeah. I'm sure so, everybody expected you to make it into the pit. They're giving well, you more credit than that. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen enough internet videos to know that that's not... Thanks, Clint. That hurt a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they, were they were giving you a bunch of credit. Then... But yeah, I, what happened is well, when I came off, I just leaned back and I just, you know, like revved the sled up to keep the front end up because I'm like, the sled's taking all this. As soon as I popped off the lip, I knew that it was not going to be cool. So I just like leaned back and I just kind of revved the sled up and it just kind of like landed on the sled and pushed the wall in. And Scott had just pulled uh, one of those big like it was like a black bag full of, it was a big foam block, basically. And good thing he did that, because it's exactly where I hit. And uh, 
well, just being in the moment, you know, I landed and I hopped off the sled and he had, he's got his double backflip ramp right up to the foam pit. And I hopped off the, like the little ledge that the skate steer had dug out. <clears throat> and as soon as both feet hit the ground, it's like somebody stabbed me. And it was just like, you know, pain up my neck. Well, when I hit actually, it was like a, <clears throat> it felt like a grab, <clears throat> damn it, like a fence there. And it went up through my neck. And, you know, just being there and being in the moment, you just kind of are going through the motions. So I hopped off, and when I hopped off that little ledge, it was bad. Like, I, as hard as I physically could try to stand, it wasn't going to happen. So I rolled him on my side, and this guy comes running up to me, and he's like, you know, what's, what's going on? What's going on? And just from the sheer pain, I just kind of, like, twisted my hips. And he's like, oh, thank God you, you know, you're moving your legs. But, and then Joff Gaskin and... Um, my girlfriend came running up there, and I was just like, one of those deals was like, oh, this sucks. Because I was more mad about it than anything. I mean, yeah, it hurt, but I was mad that I wasn't going get to get the jump, you know, anymore. It was like the first jump of the day. It rained, this was on Sunday, so it rained all day Saturday. So we're just kind of like, oh, just waiting around, and then I go out the first time and just destroy myself. And then it was a year, you know, recovery. So that kind of, you know, it really sucked, but what do you do? So what did you break? Your your L what? Your I, I crushed my T12 vertebrae to 50% of its normal size. Wow. So if you find pictures on my Facebook, you'll see, like, I don't know, the first what, collage or whatever the hell those things are. You'll see That's how right. destroyed it is. If uh, my spinal doctor told me that if it would have fractured three centimeters worse, I'd be paralyzed. Man, I didn't get like a percentage uh, reading when I broke my T5. I don't that's probably that now. that's probably a good thing though, because they're like, yeah, this Mine must have been crushed. baby shit. They were like, <laughs> <laughs> like you, ba you barely broke it, dude. Stop crying about it. But yeah, they said it was fifty percent, and if you look at the the spine itself, it the overall structure, like the curvature, is actually relatively normal but the t12 has what they call a wedge fracture so the front of it that's what i got you know the inside of me yeah, is, it's, yeah it's, it's crushed yeah it's like crushed more than the back so um yeah it, like three centimeters worse he said i'd be probably be paralyzed so um wow so is it from your head yeah. like snapping well it's just from the sheer downforce because i it's crazy like I could feel my bottom half going one direction and my top half going the other. And when that jar happened, that was when the sharp pain went up my neck. So, yeah, that's... Was so your T12, training. that's in your neck? No, that's it mid-back. Mid oh, that's even... Yeah, I was going to say, I did T5, so, the, so that's right in between the T12, the T12 is the biggest vertebrae in your back. And I crushed it to that, so... He it, crushed you know, it? <laughs> Yeah, if you so look now at it's just the, the size you know, of one of the other vertebrae. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Not nearly as cool as it was before. <laughs> it's just normal size. Vertebrae. So technically, yeah. I'm probably shorter. Yeah. You, we can sure only laugh about this because I was slower. I'm sure that you are yeah, because yeah. I was right at like 5'11", and then I broke my back when I was 17, and then I went in to get my license at 21, and they're like, you're 5'10", and I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> And then, Dude, Clint's been claiming see, this shit And then at 25, me. when I went in, they said, you're 5'9". And I was like, hey, we'll just leave it at 5'10 on there. How about that? Hey, well, we my was like my cousin, hair and just getting old. My cousin and I worked with one day, like, a couple months ago. We were all standing up against the wall, and we were doing drywall. And he um, put a mark on the wall, like, how tall we were. And I said, I, I used to be 5'11". And they started laughing at me. Now they always call me 5'11", because I'm not 5'11", I'm 5'10". It's a mythological. They, yeah, I think it's funnier than hell, but it, I'm like, dude, I was 5'11". I'm not shitting you. The T-12 the <laughs> is the biggest vertebrae in your back, and now it's half the size. I'm sure so, that you're shorter. I'm shorter. I'm shorter. I'm Clint, be... were you ever, just be honest, were you ever 5'11"? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it never happened. There's, there's Anthony when they removed his spine. Dude, I'll bit. find my old, uh, Yeah, they put it back in. My me. old ID. That, that Look, at, I know what your ID says, Clint. This is when they so. took out Anthony's spine to repair it. If you're listening, he's holding his spine. And oh, then they, 
doing well today. Hold on. I'll blow it up. Are you been playing all. this shit? I've been looking at this the whole time. No, I, you didn't tell me. me that. I know. I was back. They took it out. Well, I couldn't interrupt. So he was telling the story about being five, five thirteen. There you go. What's <laughs> up? It's him pointing so to the largest vertebrae in his back. Not his back. No, that's actually his back. They took they it took out. That's why he has the brace. That's why he had the brace on. So they Hold took his up. spine out, and he's actually pointing to the vertebrae on the, his own spine. So there's where he crushed it. That's crushed up. It. Hashtag crushed it. Hashtag. There we go. It. Killing it. <laughs> I have no idea how much battery my phone has, but I just plugged it in for shit wow, and people just that's cause. good. That's good. But yeah. There he is, crushed it again. So is that what you, that was from this day where you're on the uh, snowmobile? Yep. The, that, yeah, but actually the, the in run was to the left of that. Like, that one is the run-in that Joff Gaskin was doing the front flip on. And then the foam pit the left, I was jumping in the foam pit, but I actually like, wrecked the foam pit when I did it. So, And I apologized to Scott. I was like, oh, yeah, sorry, I wrecked your foam pit. He's like, don't worry about it, you know, because it's like barn steel or whatever. I pushed it he in. He said, don't worry, I it, it, didn't he? What's that? Then he said, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry, don't about, worry it. about it. He's like, you just Actually, gave me more, that... more hard work to do. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's, for, that's his favorite I get to thing. Use, I get to use my gardening gloves some more. <laughs> oh, he's going to be pissed. I like you gotta this. Have, I got to talk to him and have him on here. I know. I actually asked him about if he... Or I'm gonna come on here, or whatever. And it sounded like you, you kind of would. I've never talked to him. I, I need to reach out to him. Scott's like the nicest guy ever. Oh yeah, like, I uh, you know I've been around this world or trying to be in this world and do whatever in the whole freestyle world. And how I actually got to know Scott was from Cody Cavanaugh. I was trying to get rid of all my phone. I had a whole bunch of phone for a phone pit, and I was gonna build it in the spot I had you know, waiting for it, basically got shut down on me, so I just was like, well, I have an entire storage unit full of foam, like, what the hell am I going to do with all this stuff? And I'm like, I want to give it to someone who's actually going to you know, use it, and then I asked Cody if he wanted oh, it. Oh, Murray's going to use it. Yeah, and then he, it was like a couple months, he just like, random, Scott just randomly messaged me, he's like, hey, do you want to get rid of that phone? I was like, yeah, absolutely, if you want it and I already knew who Scott Murray was so I was like yeah so he came down with the semi and uh, um, you know Tyler Pennon in the kid that's doing the front flip and the sled on Nitro Circus yeah 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 him and him and uh, Scott came and got it so I was just like hey, uh, hey you know would you care if I wrote up at your place and, you know basically for giving you the foam and he's like yeah so that's how I got to know Scott so um, and then I was you know his family is super cool and He's the nicest guy in the world, you know. I talk to him a lot. Like, I don't talk to too many, like, freestyle people, but I talk to Scott and I talk to my buddy Kurt. You know, because I don't... Is that I Kurt Dubar? No, no. Oh. That's not like Kurt. Different, right? different Kurt, man. So, <laughs> my apologies to the Kurt. To Kurt. The other Sorry, one. Kurt. But, yeah, so, like, the only people I know that ride that... Well, I got my one buddy who I rode his track, but no one else is into freestyle at all. My best friend, um, he doesn't ride freestyle either, but he lives in Plainview, and my buddy Kurt lives in Minnesota too, so either i got to go to Minnesota or i got to go to Michigan to like ride with the people I want to ride with, so it kind of sucks, but what do you do? Yeah, that's freestyle. That's freestyle. But yeah, yeah. Well, Unless when you live I in Southern like California... And then you see everybody as competition, and then you don't let them ride with you anyway. Yeah, which is b crazy to me, because I would love to ride with someone. Like, I got a, because the, the girlfriend's dad owns 600 acres, we got, like, a pit. If you uh, look at some of my pictures, you'll see, like, I got a free ride spot out there, and I, I dig lips and stuff, and it's, like, a big 
hill and everything. So I go out there and I dig that out and um, then I dig lifts. There's too, one. Bro. Well, because you know, there's not much for free riding in Wisconsin. No shovel, no so, ride. No, like I just mean I dig that stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't shovel. But yeah, anymore. I mean, it's too many rocks here. Well, I got all the equipment, you know, what a guy could want. I mean, to da- her dad's got like twelve tractors and skate steers and everything. So, if I really you had to use equipment, I would. But you know, mm-hmm. sometimes it's just kind of better to go out there and shovel. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be out there in a the skate steer, friggin' chopping it up, son. Yeah, well, I want to get like a track hole out here and, and dig that hillo, but. Track and can I can make a freestyler now, dude. You gotta give up on the track hose. That's right. You gotta, <laughs> gotta go get it. See, see what I did there? Huh? You gotta, you I, gotta I, switch to ramp trains. On that one, I'm gonna go take a leak real quick. I'll be right back. All right. Does he have a track skid steer? No, it's actually a wheel skid steer, which uh, kind of sucks. But I'm problem. actually gonna buy. I've been planning on buying a track skid steer. I just want to find one for a decent price. But you know. Like, my cousin just got one, like, last year for, like, 15 grand. It's a bobcat. I'm like, man, if I could get one for 15 grand, I'd, <laughs> I'd be buying it. A but, tracked one? Yeah, a tracked bobcat, but I don't have heat yeah. or anything. But, you know, because I, like, plow snow with a skid steer here. And then I, it's really hard to, like, build, like, a snow cross setup with a wheeled skid steer. It almost pretty much doesn't work. So I kind of well, like to get one of those. That's the thing, trying to even make um, freestyle landings. You can't go up them with uh, tired ones. No, they'll just tip over backwards. Yeah. Even with the track ones, you got to have uh, some dirt in the bucket. And you have to What's have that? a bucket on them. You have to have some dirt in the bucket, but at the very least, you have to have a bucket. Yeah, because otherwise it just Cause flop Ed, over. Ed rolled one completely over backwards trying to uh, go up it without a bucket on there. It was one of those oh, with the um, joystick ones, and you know how they have yeah. a little bit of slack in them? Yeah. And like sometimes you'll pull and there's like a hesitation. So he pulled back, and then I think he pushed forward to stop it, and the thing rocked back, and it just scooped the tracks out from under it, and it rolled over backwards. I took my sled ramp off it, of the trailer, and I put it, because I have a big concrete pad. I have a barn over here, and there's a big concrete pad behind it. So we don't have cows in here, or here anymore. And I backed up and I just like pushed them both forward really fast and then the thing popped up and did a wheelie and sat right on the ass and that's a little scary. I'm sure. I'm sure. He's back. Hola. Hey, did you do your uh, sponsorship stuff yet? No, I didn't. No. While I was in the bathroom holding myself, in, I thought about that. <laughs> While you were in there holding your wiener, you were thinking about Stroker Industries? Yeah. <laughs> the carb-approved uh, gas-filling nozzle. There you go. What are it's my veterans. Yeah. That thing looks pretty awesome. I kind of want one of those. I haven't got one yet, but I did purchase your app, Clint. Oh. oh. So a long these... time ago, like when you first did it. Um, uh, I appreciate that. I'm one of the. I thought I'm an emoji on there. Did you know that? Which one? No. The back flip neck is me. The Yamaha. Well, I don't know. No, I think. Clint it never says it. Was the Yamaha, but I think they changed the color to red. Good, the correct color. I have to delete it to put to put this um, Google stuff on there because my phone's so full of pictures and this, stuff. To put, um, no, I Google I like. I deleted all my music because I have so much on my phone. I'm like, man, I might have to delete this app. <laughs> Get Google but, Photos, then you put all your stuff in the cloud. So. Yeah, that's what I need to do. One of these days when I get around to it. You can't put all your uh, wiener pics in the cloud, Nick. They're up there. It's Fugazi. <laughs> They're gone. Exactly. Only God can judge me, Clint. <laughs> yeah. And the government. Yeah. Those oh, there we go. We're going to get on this government kick. Yeah, there let's get into conspiracy theories. How are the chemtrails up in uh, 
Johnson. Not bad. Actually, we just had a, um, uh, the Blue Angels were flying around here. I, when I was working in Eau Claire, which is like almost an hour away, the Blue Angels were flying around because right now I'm doing drywall for my cousin. So we're like working around in the house, and all of a sudden they fly over like 200 miles an hour and scare the shit out of you. Those things are loud. That's pretty. And cool. then they had, uh, if you know what it is, it's Doc, the big uh, uh, World War II bomber. It's all like chrome. That was flying around. That thing is awesome. Oh, never seen that. You yeah, you have to go to the. I'm sure lots of people did back in World War II. But yeah, that that thing was the coolest plane I ever saw in my life. That thing is awesome. But yeah, it's Doc from like the was it Snow White and Seven Dwarfs? It's Doc. So oh, yeah, it's a good I, it. I was thinking Doc yeah. from like Back to the Future. No, it's it was Doc like from the Sun Polished stainless steel because it was like a yeah. DeLorean. This whole thing is polished, and shiny. This thing is cool. I was driving down the interstate and it was flying right next to me. And I was trying to take a Snapchat picture of it. It was a little difficult, but it was tracking you, dude. Obviously, <laughs> they're using like a eighty-year-old plane to trace you. They actually pulled that thing out of the desert and basically rebuilt it. Really? Yeah. If you look at look it up, it they pulled it right out of the desert and they basically this whole team of guys just rebuilt this thing. Did they pull it straight out of like the? Uh... The boneyard that uh, Robbie Madison was doing that video in. He jumped it. Probably. Yeah, that's the that's the exact one he knows we really. That's right. It still has tire marks on it. <laughs> That'd be fucking awesome. Um. Uh oh. I don't remember what I was gonna say. Do you guys know it's my shirt? Let's see it. It says Wisconsin. Oh. Uh, PBR. Do you have a Wii FMX shirt? I do not. Uh, I used you to send me one. one. I used to have a Wii FMX poster up here somewhere. Tell Cody to send you one. Cody, Cody send you one. I've actually met Cody. I haven't really ever hung out with him, but I've met him before. Oh, that guy. He also does quad lights when needed. Yeah, when, when the baby do. needs diapers. Gotta do what you gotta do. I'm stocked up on diapers for quite a while, so we should be good there. So I won't have to wear quads for a while. Up, huh? Do you guys ever hear that song, Quad Up? Of course. No. <laughs> yes, you have. You didn't play the video game? What? Uh, which one was that? MX vs. ATV, uh, like the first one? It was... Was it either that one or was it the Off-Road Fear or one of those games? Then I never, I never heard it for sure. Man. The only thing I played was Motocross Madness. That was computers before any of that stuff. You I, got the, I got the Turtle Beach headset then to talk, but I, fig I got my Xbox running, but I haven't touched it in like the last three hours. I was going to say it's a gamer headset, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, because it's like when I was messaging Clint, I'm like, what do I have around here to talk? Like, obviously if it goes through the speakers of my phone, it's gonna suck. So I was just like, oh yeah, I have that. So I plugged it in and I called my girlfriend to see if it actually worked. And it did, or it does. So I'm like, that works out perfectly. It worked out well. What do you play? What, what games are you gaming? Um, it's usually like Battlefield 1. Yeah. Like World War 1 game. I don't know, I'm not... I mean, I play video games, but... You have a headset, have... so you play them sometimes. Yeah, but I don't have internet, so I have an Xbox One. In How are we talking to you? Is this, well, like, to your phone? Yeah, my, my phone, yeah. What do you got? An iPhone. Like, what service? Oh, a straight talk to Walmart crap. Oh, well, but it seems to be it's... fucking working pretty good. Yeah, it's unlimited, so it better work. But it used to be really crap, and... The last like year or two, they really stepped it up. So whatever, yeah. it's 50, 50 bucks a month. So what the hell? Yeah, you can't beat that. I mean, whenever my internet goes out, I end up on uh, T-Mobile, and that seems to work pretty decent. Yeah, like I always used to have this really, really good internet when I lived in Eau Claire, and you know, I never, never, I could run at 
I, my PS3 off it, uh, iPad, and computer, and all sorts of stuff for Netflix, and I've never had a problem. Now I'm just me running off my phone, so. so it's unlimited. So far it's holding out on us, so that's applause. You got a hot spot on that thing? No, I actually don't. No? No, for whatever reason, Straight Talk doesn't offer that, which is Yeah, because cause people will be running their houses off of that shit. <laughs> I know, I, I would be. For 50 bucks a month, I'd have an iPhone sitting on the counter just constantly running. Streaming. Yeah, just give me a tumor. <laughs> Did Clint fall asleep? No. I'm listening to you guys talk about internet. Um, I got T-Mobile as well. It's the shit. You guys know Lightning Kugels? Yeah. Lightning Kugels. Lickers. Well, that, you know, where it's made, that's only like 30 minutes from here. Well, let's, take a, let's take a brewery tour trip. I've done that. It's really, really cool. Is it? Do they give you free drinks? Yeah, like, yeah, you get, I think they give you six free drinks. Now to do it. So, like, yeah, like the one I tried that was probably the nastiest beer I've ever had. It was like a really, really dark ale. It was called Big Eddie, and it was pretty bad. Like, if you if you don't like like IPAs, like uh, Goose Island IPAs or stuff like that, you wouldn't like this at all. Like, I can drink like, Goose Island like IPAs and stuff. Yeah, oh, I can drink the shit out of. They got the Barry Weiss. That's pretty. I mean, we get a lot of Lenny Kugels down here because we're basically right there. Close. Yeah, like I the one I've been on lately, the kick I've been on is the Summer Shandy kick. Yeah. Those are really good. Those but super good. I used to not like them, but I used to drink like three and then I just got a gut rot and I was like, no, I'm done. But <laughs> my go to beer is Coors Light, so. Yeah, like gut rot. That sounds like some, uh, some UP talk. About that yeah, time, uh, about that, I'd get some gut rot. Don't you know they're gay? <laughs> Shit all. <laughs> You're darn tooting there, fella. <laughs> Alright. This kid's out for the fifth time. Throw him on the floor. You can't throw kids, dude. We went over this. Drop him on the floor, then. <laughs> He's quick on his feet. I can't. He always lands on him. Well, that's good. You see him practicing, see him practicing hole shots? I did. He was watching. I think he had to do hole PW shots. Or? Yeah, little PW. Is that on the PW? I was watching, like, right before we started this, I was watching Instagram stories and saw him on PW. Yeah, he hasn't been yeah. wanting to, like, he didn't want to ride for a while. Now every day at dinner, he's like, can we ride, can we ride? And then uh, we were watching Deegan's kid do hole shots this morning. Oh. And I, I can't get him to do hole shots. Like, he's like, nah, because I'd raise my hand and go like that. It's like, no, I don't want to do it. And then he saw Deegan's kid do it. And then I was like, hold on. Right yeah, now he's, he's on right away. And then he's just holding the pin, like, aiming towards the trees. I had to get him to a track. We tore up the soccer yeah. ball from now. She just built him one right there in your yard. I know. It's pretty tight back here. I got I got an eighth acre, probably. <laughs> Not 600. You have to make him an arena cross track. Just shred in the front yard. Yeah, that's actually what we used to have is an arena cross track, and we had a kicker ramp in the middle. And uh, it was built, obviously, for quads. But my buddy hit it on an old Yamaha, or not Yamaha, uh, Polaris Indy 340. And th the gap was only like 30 feet, and he overshot it like 30 feet, feet and like just wadded himself up. It was. Yeah, because there's no it, suspension on it. Quad, no, especially the old one. He, we had two jumps. We had one by the road. Like if you'd hit it, you'd like be as high as the power lines. And uh, he jumped off that one and. He, like, did this, like, massive whip, but it just, like, stayed sideways, and then he just, like, destroyed himself. The seat flew off. He, he broke the <laughs> windshield. Like, he was, like, he's, like, our Larry Enticer. <laughs> Is it Larry Enticer your Larry Enticer? Is he the Canadian or the, uh, the Wisconsin, like, authority? The go-to guy. Yeah. Yeah, but he drinks Bush, so. That tells you how kind of guy you guys do. don't? <laughs> no, I don't mind Bush. Just, you have to drink I guess, if you, I guess if you're that poor. 
<laughs> Here you have it. Anthony Acker calls Larry the enticer poor. <laughs> the guy's probably got more money than I got. He's got way more YouTube hits. He's got an enticer. Wait, I just like to call, like, start shit on the, on the internet. So that's why I would just make that, that little quote, that quotable. That guy is pretty crazy, though, jumping that freaking sled. Yeah, in no fucking jean jacket, no helmet. Yeah. The Canadian tuxedo. <laughs> I actually watched a um, Evil Knievel video the other day, like a documentary. That dude was straight savage. Like, the stuff he did, Yeah. I'd never do that shit. Like, I would <laughs> rather do it on a pit bike than what he was jumping. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Just to have something to get away from. Did you ever see that, if you, I don't know how much you, you know, Evil Knievel stuff you've ever watched, but you know oh. he, got in a, he got in a fight with, like, the Hells Angels? He beat their that, asses. Yeah. The people are jumping out of the stadiums, beating them with, like, two-by-fours and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's, was, that was awesome. That's how you, you run a crew. That's next. I know. Clint Stark. You Clint Stark. Like you need that to energy. What? Huh? What? Who? Clint looks like he needs a five-hour energy. He's just like over it right now. It's a safe life, man. Okay. Can't have any sound. YouTube is done. Yeah. Oz is like Spike TV, it'll be fucking lame. Yeah, then I watched Robbie Knievel jump that gap over the Grand Canyon. And then, like, I don't understand what he was doing. Like, his landing was shit. Like, the run out was just Dude, horrible. I have that video pulled up to narrate over top of it. Yeah. He, he had, what was like... He? I, I don't know, dude, who the fuck set that up? Because there was literally like a hundred feet of shutdown before that huge dip bales. in the desert. How about that big dip that he hit? Like, why was there a big dip there? Because he could mess with the tribal lane. That's the story. Well, is it? You're telling me they couldn't have went out there with the tribal lane and just clear it up and... You're part Indian, dude. You said it yourself. You can't touch it. <laughs> You were probably the guy who's like, don't, don't fuck up my land. Don't let this guy yeah. do it. I'll come after he had, you. He had some fucking bills to pay. And he's like, all right, fuck it. I'll do it. Take a tomahawk to your throat or something. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. Scalp you. It's no good Can you see the video you. I'm playing, Clint? What? Can you see the video I'm playing? Oh. I can, I can see it. It's a Spike TV clip, so I don't know how good it's going to be. I had muted. Oh. Somebody gave him the finger. <laughs> this yeah. guy was like, I was going to fuck him up, but evil got to it first. Oh, this is, let's yeah, see. right here. I love it. <laughs> they just, like, full beat down. So, yeah. we're watching the... Uh... Is this Hell's Angels run out onto the floor after Evil's jump? Yeah. Well, he threw, he threw a tire iron, and that's why Evil, like, came back with his bike. And, like, I, it sounded like he, like, slid it out and, like, just, like, yeah. you know, ghost rid. Oh, they kicked it in the and, face. Yeah, and they've got, like, two-by-fours, and they're just going, like, all out on this guy. On the Hell's Angels Man. guy. Can you imagine having a fan base that's just like, all right, whatever, you will go brawl some Hell's Angels. <laughs> yeah, what dude? What level was that dude on that like people beat Hell's Angels' asses for him? Dude, how about he the fact that he's still cool. on that level? He's dead. <laughs> yeah. This is awesome. Wow. That I never knew anything about that until like last week. Sometime I was just like, oh, that's insane. What? Like. He hated the Hells Angels. Because it was taken away from him. He was he was evil. He was the guy. He didn't Real like deal. because they did drugs. He was telling kids, don't fucking drink, do drugs, and then he'd slam a shot and go 
jump a bunch of buses. When's uh, Pastrana doing that that jump thing? July That's like really 8th. soon, isn't it? When? Um, 8th? July 8th. So was that Friday or Saturday or something? I think we're going to do a live podcast during it. No? I don't know. When is it? I don't know. I just made that up. I don't, I don't know what day that is. Oh. I said it's the 8th, but I don't know what day that is. We posted it. Well, people are all mad that he's like, oh, he's not doing it on the Harley. Well, Eagle didn't always ride a Harley either. He rode oh. you know, Triumph and everything. So, like, you and can't be like, oh, as long as he's not doing it on a dirt bike, then... And the whole thing is, he's not doing it for fucking free regardless. He's only doing it because somebody's paying him. No. Yeah, he, so that's like... He really wants no. to be... Evil Clint, director. you didn't hear? He's getting paid to do this. this what? Is, you heard it here first. TMZ. I need a big straw in this. Dude, he's like a sellout. Guess what? Guess what we just got in live from one of our sources. What? Beer? <laughs> Pastrana's getting paid to do this jump. Oh, shit. He's such a sellout, Crazy. dude. I know. Selling out to the man. Spectacular cycle jumps. Right, well, did you guys see that thing earlier? Like, I think it was like an hour ago, like right before we got on here, that he was doing like a double backflip, and it's then he did backflip. like another one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was. Uh, and did you see he, the uh, caption? No. When you have to dust off your bike to show the kids how it's. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know his bike Remember, was probably dusty as fuck. I bet when he started that. Remember the first time. He fucking did it, and he's like, I'm never doing that again. And then he started yep. every time since. And then, he, then, what was it? He did it at X Games at, in one of his freestyle runs. Yeah. Maybe. Is it here? I'm going to play it, so I'm going to cut out for a minute. Look how squirrely he is. <laughs> what? What did you say? Yeah, he got, like, on the, when he landed, he got all squirrely on the first double backflip. And then he just, like, fuck it and goes for the next one. Well, if you hear the crowd, I'm not sure that he was supposed to hit that second one or not, that they knew he was going to or what. Because he barely made it to that second ramp. What do you, are you have the video on Nick? What are you doing? Yeah. I don't oh, see it. With us. My bad, I got excited. I was just fucking watching. He's just own. sitting here watching videos by himself. I, just, it's the show. so exciting. You guys missed it. Now I'm gonna be bored. Thanks for excluding us. Hey guys, want to you want to listen to me get excited watching that again? Yeah, you just play it. All right, yeah. here. <laughs> Are you fucking ready? We're ready. Go right to the Can you hear it? Wait, yeah, can yeah. you hear that? Yes. Like he's already yeah. so play it. Clint, are you ready? I'm ready. I've seen it. You're ready right now. The Pimsky Moto. <laughs> That's the bike I missed the most. I had an 05 RM250. Man, I missed that bike. I've had lots of bikes since, but man, the, out of all bikes I've ever sold, that's the one I regret selling. Uh, you know what, Pastrana, that is an 05 RM250. Probably. Oh, clapped out. 05, 06. I think they stopped making them in, what, 07? Like when the CR went out, too? And it's probably not even like rebuilt or anything. It's just 07 like, was the last out. year of the CR250? I thought... I thought so, because I think my buddy had an 07, because he owned a, a, deal, a dealership, and he had an 07, and I swore he said that 07 was the last year they made a CR250. Maybe. I know people that had 07s. They had this weird fucking bog in them. Really? Yeah, once they got old. I had an old one well, to do that. Well, I was, heard the, which row was it? No, uh... Doug Cossie had no seven. Uh, Cossie a Suzuki? No. A Honda. Oh. And then um, 
Kyle Lee had an 07, and both of them had issues with the things cutting out weird. Well, I, I always heard that the 01 was the best engine. Yeah, once, no. No way. I'd go 90s bikes. I had, uh, I never had a CR250. I have, I rode Suzuki's, and now I have a Kawasaki, but. Well, oh. I can tell you that CR two fifty like two fifty two. Oh, actually, Honda's two strokes turned to shit in like ninety nine. Two thousand was the slowest one twenty five I ever rode in my friggin' life. The two thousand uh, CR two fifty and two thousand ones were. I think my buddy had an O one. Yeah, they weren't fast. The the old like ninety. Are you talking two strokes, right? Yeah. Yeah. I had a 95 RM125, the but I never rebuilt the thing. I just kept riding it because I was too poor when I was a kid to rebuild it. So I just rode it until it pretty much didn't run anymore. <laughs> how, how old are you, Anthony? 28. Oh, okay. What the hell are you doing with a 95 125? That was back in like it was 2000 I had that. That's back when he was 5'11 and he could ride it. <laughs> right. That's true. No, uh, I've had uh, a 95 RM125, a 2000 RM250, a 2005 uh, RM250, uh, 2011 uh, RMZ250F, and then now I have a KX450, which is a 13. Okay. But Did you see Twitch got a new one? I mean, it's like the electric start is in the Yeah, seat. he's trying to figure out how to put grab holds in it. Yeah, what the fuck? Where are they going to put that thing? Well, that's the thing is, if I can sell this 13, I'm buying a 19, and my sled I have is a 17, so I want to get a, uh, a new one of those, probably. I just actually got this one this winter, but um, the 17, like, Articat snowmobile, the race sled that I have, um, I had to send the computer out to Articat, like, what was it, like, a month ago, because when I'd ride it, like, this winter, I, never, I didn't have it... De- uh, didn't get it set up to ride, you know, ramps or anything yet, because I just got it, like, midwinter, you know, and it takes a while to build a seat and all that crap, but the 17s apparently have some fog in them. I had to send the ECU out, because I'm like, I don't want it to happen, what happened up at Scott's place, and, you know, go off a ramp and just, like, wad myself. You know, I bought it because it's it's the first year that they make already kind of race sleds EFI, so... I bought an EFI sled thinking, oh, I ain't going to have any problems, and now I'll apparently have problems, so I might just... Yeah, because it's the first year. Although I had yeah. an 09 CRF 450, and that thing was pretty good. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> like, my, my one buddy had a 07 um, CRF 250, and then he had an 08. And the 07 was completely stocked. The 08 was fully modded, like Tokyo mods, and the thing Tokyo was decked. Mods. Well, that's offensive. You could have just said it was a Japanese-made bike. You could have said it was a modified Japanese bike. He's like, oh, we got Oriental mods. But it's crazy, like, it, the comparison, because you never, like, got slant eyes really get to... Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go. I didn't even hear that. <laughs> like... Like, cause you never get to compare like the exact same bike full, you know, fully built in stock. So like, I rode his 07. I'm like, oh yeah, the thing rips. And then got his 08. I'm like, holy crap, this is like a completely different bike. Well, I'm pretty. And, you know, I think that they were. I think yeah, that like, the 08 was the only bike anyway. Yeah, cause my cousin that had had a track at his house, uh, he had. Uh, 04, but he put an 08 head on it and he put a big bar in it and that thing ripped. That is some Wisconsin shit right there. Yeah. I'm not Caesar. doing all that. I'm just running the bike how it came, maybe put an exhaust on it. That's it. This yeah, like my first my, bike my, I ever put an exhaust on. And that's only because I was in circuses and everybody's on 450s. Yeah, like my 450 is basically completely stock other than it's got exhaust on it and, you know, some bolt on stuff, but. Nick, Other than do, you, that, do you think, Nick, if you didn't have that extra power of the pipe, you probably would have greased everything? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was greasing everything, and I'm like, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> I need to hit, I want to hit that bottom, <laughs> the bottom panel. Cause this is, I, but I, you look at, like, Bilko, he used to ride, well, it was, like, around 08, he rode a Honda 250F. Yeah, he did have a 250F, then he went to the 350. 
Or I think we actually cool. were the same age because he was posting pictures of him like racing 250s when they first came out. Same time, same gear. We're basically we're basically the same person. I just missed that dress. I guess I actually just I had two bikes and I just got rid of it. I had a 15 CRS that was completely stock. I only had like three hours on it and I sold it. And then I've got my sled, but. That was a damn nice bike. It's cr- it, the difference from you know, like just sitting on it from the two fifty F. You know, it's really skinny. The Honda's really skinny. Yeah. And then you get on the four fifty. It's like really wide. Feels heavy. It was a, But I. It was a two fifty. What year was, was it? A fifteen uh, CRF two fifty. Oh. But that was an awesome bike. Like, cause I kind of wanted like a track bike, and then like a freestyle bike, but the. I was just like, well, I just don't want to, you know, have two bikes and then and try to come up with, you know, seven thousand dollars for a, a sled. So it's just like, well, if I sell this, then I can, you know, get a sled. But, but that Honda was awesome. But Honda sort was nice, but yeah, I like that. You know, I obviously had to do exhaust and stuff on it. But if I put like exhaust on it, which is probably the only thing I was going to do to it, put exhaust on it and maybe like a different seat cover on it, then that bike would have been absolutely awesome but you know it, it was it ripped but you could tell it it needed exhaust and a seat but, cover yeah i don't know i just like the stocks honda seat covers just i don't know i don't like them that much it just he hates he hates red <laughs> <laughs> like a ball i just gave he needs the ribs on his seat yeah the they custom made ones dude uh sunday my Bike was just kept pulling my pants down. Well, you do. You must have did a race last weekend, huh? Yeah. You, that is that your first race since you like. No, I raced the opener at English Town in March. Oh. And I is raced, that like yeah, cause you like messed up your leg or whatever? I raced once last year. Last year I really felt like I shouldn't have been doing what I was doing, but I only raced the B class. And then this oh. year, I just got myself a district card and got back running A class stuff. So, like, I mean, I, I know how it is here. Like, if over here, if like, like you enter in a B class, then you're like stuck in B class. No, you can get out of there. I mean, here's the thing: if you don't run any B, how are you gonna go to A? But I mean, here I had like a pro license and shit like years ago. So, as far as in the district here district six like i are they had all my information so yeah because over here is like district 16 i think yeah i, think but I never start. had a district card i just would show up and i sometimes i had an a card you're in those flyover states it was probably all yeah they, they were real specific you never go backwards I do whatever i want whatever it's a flyover state want. I should have just not got, after like a couple of years, you go down a class. I should have just gone and won some uh, novice class in, at Loretta's. Those yeah, in like a couple of years, I'm going to be an old timer. So I'll be running 30 plus. Yeah, two oh, years. Gross. Two years, I'm running uh, 40 plus. To be honest, when you posted all those pictures and shit, I thought you were in the 40 plus class. No, I was running 30 because 35 is open and they don't pay. And I'm like, I might as well at least have a chance to win my money back. I would rather get fifth place and not get any money than get first and not get any money. Hell yeah. Something. Um, yeah, I can't uh, go that as fast as those guys for that long. I can go, you know, like... I could, I think I could stay top three, four, uh, if the race was like three quarters of a lap. Oh yeah, it, dude, half lap, probably the second fastest dude out there. After that, screwed. I got to do the My arms. arms pop. Well, I just ran out of wind, like those dudes are hauling ass and I'm just like pushing hard just to run their pace. I should have just fucking got in behind um, Jim McElvain and just tried to follow all of his lines. Just seeing how long I could hang out right there. But should have, should have, could have, would have. Yeah. 
Well, now I'm like, now I'm like, why didn't I do that? I'll be back in like two seconds. I gotta go talk to the girlfriend quick. She calls He's me. gotta pee. Just say you gotta pee. It's not a big problem. Okay, I gotta pee. Alright, Tony Acker, go. I'm about five beers in, so. Well, no shit. You can just pee your pants. Let's see. And then I'm gonna pull up your hut. Ah, uh, is it gonna do this the whole time? It's gone. What is it? Sounds like you're it's, playing it's... Galactica or something. It's or not what? me, it's his headphones. Oh. Uh... I think they're noise canceling or something. Yeah. All right, so here's if you're listening. We're gonna watch. You're gonna listen to us watch. You're gonna play. listen. To us watch. Yeah. First lap. Here we go. I wheelied out of the gate and then let it let off. But I don't think I wanted to be any further forward anyway. It just flat that. Um, people were, there was a roller that we missed, we come in after it on the first turn, but, um, when you come around to the next lap, people were just like a big single, people were getting that thing friggin' pinned and jumping onto the first table, uh, and I was like, all that would be like, just, yeah, just like that. see that guy on the green bike, I should have just followed down right now. That's the guy I should have. I should have just tried to follow. Did I give you so many tips on that? What? I There's so many tips I can give you on that. Oh, he's back. There we go. What were you whack or Anthony? What tips were you gonna give me, Nick? I had all kinds of like promoto tips, like you uh, need to get your hips back. Head over the bar. But you couldn't, you couldn't see me in that video, so how do you know? I can tell by the angle of your camera <laughs> that, like, you weren't over the bars enough. I was going to write all this shit on there, too, and talk shit. Just as watch other people be like, you can't tell from that angle. Yeah. Clint's got a oh, loyal So if I talk shit on his Instagram about, like, his writing, I can't see people as fucking... You think that, that, I think that they would chime in with you. I don't think anybody's going to defend me. Uh, I was kind of hoping people would talk shit. Yeah, I think YouTube's so. YouTube's really funny because like it like if someone has never hit a ramp, probably never even rode a dirt bike or anything else, they'll just sit there and talk shit the whole time. It's like, how would you know how that works if you've never jumped anything? It's just like because well, I was actually like. That Tyler Pennon and um, I was reading after he did the front flip the first time at Nitro Circuit because people are like, oh, we're talking shit. And they're like, how the hell would you know how to front flip a snowmobile? You've probably never even ridden one and you're sitting here talking shit. But I that don't was me talking that. shit. Like, I was like, he did that <laughs> wrong. I rode a Polaris in 98. It was, I went super fast. I front flipped one by accident. Like, I just. <laughs> yeah. yeah they're like oh the ramp did all the work I'm like you have no idea like I've seen Tyler and I know Tyler and I know what work he put in to pull that off like it just doesn't happen like yeah. people are just like oh I just can't stand somebody was online like talking shit to um, Javier about the ramp does all the work and blah 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 and I'm Dude. like no the ramp just makes Tricks possible in a front flip. It doesn't do. I think yeah, you should do a a, a surfer takeoff on a front flip ramp. <laughs> just to watch the internet explode. It'd probably be full KOD after he went off though. It'd just be straight and then back. But the amount of internet bullshit that'd be talked about. No, oh, seat surfer takeoffs are lame, and you can't fucking use a fake ramp. Like, I, I, I mean, I understand kind of, like, what the deal is about that ramp. Because, like, oh, it makes it easier. Well, obviously, like, that's what it's there for. Yeah, but flip levers make it easier. I mean, here's the but thing. I talk shit. Like, flip levers didn't make, they don't, as soon as you put flip levers on, you're not throwing uh, super flips. You know? Right. And as soon as you hit the front flip ramp, you're not doing front flip next. 
You know, like you still right. need to be able to control it. It just doesn't happen, like because you bolt something on your bike or you have a special ramp. You still have to have input, know exactly how to do that in the rotation. And I mean, it just drives me insane, like why people talk shit. <laughs> like most people it. have ne never it's ridden cool. or. I don't know. I mean, I just know what what was put into that. I mean... It's the internet. Fuck it. Just fuel the fire. Just instigate. Yeah, it definitely fuels the fire. That's for sure. But I don't, like, post a lot because just because I hate stupid people. So I don't, like, have, like, 100 million followers on Instagram. But whatever. It is what it is. Listen, people are going to talk shit. So you yeah, might just, let just let do whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, look, look how dialed Javier is. Like, every time that guy goes off the ramp, it's like perfect. Picture perfect. Yeah. He doesn't go low. He's the person that you're short. talking shit to. Yeah. They do because he responds. No, yeah, there was some dude that didn't ride, like he said. He, like, knew somebody. He was a photographer or something, so I guess he knew somebody or something. You know what I mean? I like it. I like it when people that are in the circumference of people that are really good feel that they can talk shit to you. And I'm like, just because you hang out with them or whatever, you take pictures of them doesn't mean that fucking... You can talk shit to me about riding. Yeah. You're static. And Clint, who are you talking to? Your face is glowing blue. Was that me staticking or somebody else? Like, cause it's pretty rough. That's you. That's your gamer headset. <laughs> when you left earlier, it was just like. <sighs> yeah, when you set it down. Is it? Now I'm gonna game? listen to this on podcast tomorrow and hate my life. Like, oh, that sounds. You're gonna be like, I'm an asshole. It only did some of the time. So far, my straight talks hold them out. That's good. That's them cutting out on you slowly but surely. Like earlier, Clint, when you asked me, I was like, oh man, I don't have any Wi Fi, so I hope this works. <laughs> yeah, man, phones work good. Nick did a whole thing driving through the middle of nowhere. Indiana, your most hated state, Anthony. <laughs> That's my brother's most hated state. I've never been there. Nah, so you jumped right on board. You were like, these people are shit. Yeah, you heard it here first. I Anthony have noticed hates. that. The, the relation that comes up here have all butch haircuts, so I don't know if that's something. Probably does. I'm going to quote you on that, too. <laughs> oh, I don't know. They probably never watched this podcast, so I ain't worried. I don't talk shit on our podcast like that. Dude, millions Maybe. of people watch this. You never know who. It's a Dude, this crowd is... Our audience is so diverse. Fix your game or headphones. This is what happens when you're playing. Go like this. Smack them. That seems like it would Smack work. Smack your head. It he can't hear us right now. He can't there hear us at all. Oh, like I'm I got head. you. I can hear you. Can you I hear the static? Can you hear the static? A little bit. Here and there. We can hear a lot. We hear it a lot. The internet's going to be going wild. Clint gets so frustrated. Yeah, I used to listen to every one of these when I was a welder. Like I, I was a welder for like the last six years. So like, I'd well, why don't you go back to welding so you can listen to all the podcasts? I mean, why would you change jobs now? I still listen to them like when I'm driving, but um, I don't listen to them at work now. We just always give them now because doing drywall and stuff like that. I mean, you're always moving and always going to a different house and this and that. So, I mean, uh, Nick, you're kind of like, you do like construction or something, don't you? He doesn't do anything. He I know on, people that do stands, construction. Oh, click! He Shut stands on up. roofs. <laughs> I do stand on roofs. I right. also stand in rooms. <laughs> I stand next to houses. I sit in front of computers. He points yes, at a lot. I do. He points at the houses and the roofs a lot as well. Yeah. If Clint was like to move he, to my area, I might hire him if he changes his attitude. <laughs> so Never happened. Never happened. <laughs> <laughs> it would, but it would be 
this is the sad part. Like, if you really think about it, like, like a guy like Clint should never have to work in a normal job again. That's like, right. What he's done in his life. This is. It's, I can't even. You focused on the wrong part of the story. This is the great part. It's America. Uh, so Clint did yeah, back when he got paid. You look at he almost any, died a couple any times. Other sport, any other he sport. He still makes money. Any other sport that takes half as much you know, creativity or talent or whatever you want to call it. I would just say probably stupidity. Stupidity. That, that's half as much sport. stupidity. But I, I, I know, mean, dude. Listen, I, play, I should have played like hockey even. I bet just to yeah. make it on a team, I bet on the minor league teams, they're making friggin' $100,000 or whatever, $80,000. This is the yeah, land of free. free. So it's like, free you have a shot to go try and do that to start a freestyle contest to do the amateur shit. And then if, if it doesn't go through, you don't get a bunch of money and you go get a job. Here, if you were in China, you'd be rolling around with like a bamboo stick tied to your leg. Fucking. Maybe build iPhones if you were good at it. That's a good job. Yeah, over there it is. No, it's not. They have nets outside of the building because people jump out of the windows so much. But that's one of the best jobs. <laughs> you got any tennis shoes? Yeah, true. Sure. You want the yeah, high we got pressure. Options. We got options. That's the whole thing. I want the high pressure uh, scenario. Maybe yeah, what, what about them like, Nike boots that uh, James Stewart had? Yeah, I want some. I'm what about Jimmy Stewart? What's happened to his job? You get outsourced to fucking. Malcolm the last Stewart? time I watched him at Millville was like he was running like tenth place. I'm like, this is not the James Stewart I grew up watching. He's just like cruising around. Um, you know that guy's got crazy talent, but he's all day just like cruising around. And he was yeah. doing a sin and he was pissed. Because his pants are filled with too much money. It's got to be what it is. Can't move. No, I don't know. Who You know, the guys still won a bunch of championships. And the problem is that he didn't do that well, like, for the last couple of years. So that's what everybody remembers. But the guy still right. is second all-time winning, you know, on the win list. Uh, he's got indoor championships, outdoor championships on small bikes, big bikes. Like, it's clearly yeah. fast, dude. He was winning... When everybody was on two fifty F, he was on one twenty five. He should have oh, just, okay. you know, should have just signed up and been done, and had the last year and just would have been done. But he kind of like drug it out. Well, he so was so young as shit. Yeah, he was young, and all these things happened, and that's when it come off the rails. I don't think he wanted to end it like that. Obviously, you know. So no, I, I don't think so either. But like, I, man, to it's cool that he's still in a way. Now, yeah, like I just told them ready to go fuck themselves. Is he even 30? Dude, I bet he's barely... He's probably, Anthony, he's probably your age. Yeah. He, he, I think he's a little older than me. and not, Probably not much, but he's probably like 30. Looking it up. Internet will solve this whole fucking thing. Oh. Apparently he's a white guy who died in 97. See? The internet <laughs> solved it. That's why he stopped ra racing. Damn. It's actually amazing he that he a, raced, He was a hologram the whole time. It's amazing that he raced for an extra, like, 12 years after he died. Yeah, the fastest years of his life, just... And here's a conspiracy theory. He's a hologram the whole time. He, uh, he's 32. What? Yeah, and if you want to know, he's 5'7", so he's much shorter than you guys at 5... What are you guys, 5'9"? Dude, nine? Matt, he must have broken his back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He fractured his vertebrae, now he's he short. was. Because look how tall Malcolm is. He didn't break his back. Let's look him up. I can do a real quick... Uh... But, like, it, uh, remember that show that they were on? Uh, forget what Five, ten. World. He's shorter than you guys. But they were on, but Malcolm never seemed like he was, like, really into it. So, until, like, here's the what I heard. Years. That's TV. TV fucks everything up. No, here's what I heard. Malcolm's actually the talented one. He didn't give a shit. He wanted to fish. Yeah. Yeah, I know he's big into that. That sounds like a good mythological, but... Dude, Stuart was talented as fuck. Here's the thing. Javier's, Javier's amazingly talented, right? Yeah. Gabriel's 
way more talented. But he doesn't have like near the exposure. No. And I like I follow his Instagram. He doesn't have stuff. near the drive as obvious. First first show I ever did was with Gabriel. I also missed that landing, if you just side note. <laughs> you know. so did you overshoot it? Sloan missed it too. Yeah, I, well I missed it a little bit. Sloan missed it, had ducked the, the fucking scoreboard, blew out his front wheel. If you were at one twenty five you'd probably grease every one of them. No, that's why did. I'm at two, that's why I'm on two fifty F. Yeah. yeah. Sure. The only is that bike behind you at 250? What? Is that bike behind you at 250? I thought that was a 450. Fuck no, dude. 250F. I, I puke up meals just to make this thing usable. Yes. Rip. <laughs> He's like, I added extra horse, one horsepower to my bike. How'd you do that? He's like, I vomited for the last week. Yeah. I just didn't wear my left boot. That's 10 pounds. <laughs> You know what that is? Horsepower to pounds? Yeah. Uh, Pro Circuit cuts out the, they have the plastics are the color of the graphics everywhere. And the gra and like just the color, the opposite colors are stickers on there. The rest of it's all cut out. For cereal? For cereal, bro. Save ounces. Mitch Payton's a scientist. He's a mad scientist. He's the Elon Musk of motocross. He's like, if it's, a, True. if it's this much lighter, then we can run it this much hotter. Yeah. You I see that like, Nate Adams? That bikes are melting. You see that Nate Adams went full electric now? I love it, dude. Yeah, even his toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't his toothbrush. Well, it was electric, whatever it was. No, that like those bikes, those Altas look pretty badass. I kind of want one, but they're kind of expensive. Yeah, well, they'll be coming around used soon, right? But I don't know. I mean, what's worse, buying a used electric bike or used four stroke? Probably used four, four stroke. stroke. Four stroke. Because then you're at, you're putting valves in it and stuff. It's probably already so, kicking. That thing just got a weak battery. Just like I oh, yeah, replaced the brushes. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I want one. I want. They got that new um dual sport. You need one so you can ride around the baseball field with your kid. That's fucking right. And it'd be silent. See, good point. I had a dual sport. I had a um, DRZ 400 SM that I sold a couple months ago. Well, let me tell you. I rode an XR 650 97. Then I rode a awesome. 98 DR 650. And... I hate to say it because I'm a Honda guy. I think the DR is a little bit better. Really? Yeah. The, well, the well there was a DR what? 650. They're both 650s, and they're like a year. I've apart. never ridden a 650, but I've ridden a DRZ 400, obviously. But, but I don't. No, the I mean, weight. Sure it's the still 650's heavy. 650's got way more but, power. Yeah, and it's still heavy, but the weight's really low. The XR 650 is super tall. And um, the weight's yeah. kind of high on it, so it doesn't handle That's like a pro, it. so he can be like, the weight's here and there, I could jump a ramp, and this side's different than this side, and I'm like, I'm, I got stock suspension, and I just... You could <laughs> notice the difference if you rode these two bikes. You you may go, I don't know, this one just moves around better. I, I feel like if I did, I would just lie, just so I'd be like, nope, these feel exactly the same. You'd be like, You're, you don't know what you're talking about. You just got southern, like he's gonna fist. I'm gonna fist fight you, brother. DRZs are four hundreds are awesome because you can just wheelie all day long. You can wheelie all I mean, day long. <laughs> they're fun. <laughs> I can only wheelie for like I mean, hundred feet. Really? Standing power wheeling. <sighs> Maybe two hundred. That's why I like my. That's why I like my 450, man. You could ride wheelies all day long on that thing. I got a 450. I'm just not a good wheelie guy. No. Like, I just want to I'm go just, fast, I'm trying, man. I'm trying to get Rich Kern's level of, like, fender scraping, but just dragging it's not hand. easy. You got to sacrifice a lot of fenders for that. Yeah, exactly. That's probably why I never got good at wheelies. I didn't like breaking. I'd say, it's, I'd say it's easier on my 450 than on my... 252 stroke, man, that's yeah, it. Yeah, of course. I mean, it had four tons of power, but... Really. 
but man, I, I could I can ride half my wheelies on my four fifty all day long. It's it's almost effortless. It's almost too easy. But if I put a another tooth up on my rear sprocket, I'd probably do it even better. But in this bike, I could just just prime up. It's easy. Why don't you get a my, pizza size rear sprocket? A what? A pizza size rear sprocket. Like the like wheel, a, like Doug Demokas, the wheelie that's key. That's right. Like a, with a front like a wheel medium, motor, fucking like a medium Pizza Hut pizza, like those crotch rocket guys do, like yes, monster exactly. sprockets. Exactly. Now like fucking seventy five. Like then they just turn their uh, they turn their idle up so they can just idle around. And exactly. In third gear, they go three miles an hour in third gear, no hands on the handlebar wheelie. Yeah, I do it all the time. I had a GSX R750. That was a fun bike, but I sold that quite a while ago. No, nah, those bikes are bad news. No, yeah, my cu my cousin actually died on a crotch rocket. But oh, thanks so for bringing us down. The crotch yeah. rockets are they're awesome, but man, you can get yourself in trouble on them damn things. Yeah, but yeah we live a lot of death with, machines, my friend. He went off a corner at like I think it was like a buck thirty. Well, so sounds like yeah, too fast for that corner. It was a big lofty corner, and but man, well the thing is, is it's kind of a crazy story. But um, the cops were actually chasing him, and the, the dude rode a motorcycle like rain or shine, and like he lived on that bike. So he was coming around this corner, and from what I've heard, I. One of my relatives actually saw the dash cam video. The co another cop came around the other side and basically cut him off, and he had nowhere to go and just went off into the woods and wrapped himself around the tree. But yeah, it was pretty wild. It was probably like eight, ten years ago now. But yeah, car rockets are dangerous. They're fun, but it's really fun in the street line. Yeah, you just don't run the cops on dirt bike. Let's stick to that. Yeah, well. We actually were riding the other day. We were at, my cousins got all all my cousins and brothers had side by side. So we were driving up a main interstate road that we weren't supposed to be on, and we were just like hauling ass on this road. I'm like, yeah, if we get caught, you know, there's like six of us, and we could all go in different directions. He's only going to chase one of us. So, but we took it. What the hell? That's like, strange. You guys ever ride any of those side by sides, really? Yeah, one time my buddy and me, and he's like, yeah, let's take it out. He bought a 12-pack, and then like he drank more than half of it. <laughs> and then he was doing donuts on the way home, and I'm like, this is getting wild. Was it a Razor, or what was it? Uh, it was a, it was a Razor, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was a Razor. And then uh, my, he broke my brother, my brother has a Wildcat. My one buddy has a Wildcat. My cousin Marshall has a YXZ 1000, the Yamaha, that's a uh, manual. Yeah, that thing is that thing is badass. Oh, I didn't know they were manual. Yeah, they're manual. They're, they're just basically like a rally car. Like you just pull them back to go in a higher gear, or push them forward to go down a gear. Oh, that's pretty but, fun. cool. Yeah, it's like a hundred and what is this, like a hundred and thirty horse or something like that. But that thing is, it's fun, really fun. But they're super expensive. I think you paid like twenty five grand for that thing. Oh like my 16. gosh, dude, that's a car. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You trash but, a car. Yeah, well, he's got brand new cars and trucks. He's got a 15 Mustang that's 700 horsepower. Oh, well, he's on a different level then. Yeah, well, he's a welder. <laughs> that's my buddy who broke his arm. He's a welder now. But he's also like my... He married my wife's cousin. We were best friends growing oh. up. So now we're family. So then we leave parties and we're like, don't break your arm and we get harassed. <laughs> like, but yeah, yeah that, that, I, I, I see. That YXZ is awesome, but you know when it, I think it'll go like eighty five, something like that. But it gets nope. kind of sketchy because it starts yeah. to like because it's it's got basically they look like truck tires. It starts to wander like at higher speed speeds, wobble. but yeah, well, not like really a speed wobble. It just like wanders from one side of the road to the other. You know, when you're going ninety and you got that big of a tire, it's like an off road tire. It starts to wander. There's a lot of sidewall there, but yeah. Those things are fun as hell, but so like if I'm not around dirt bikes or sleds, I'm around side by side. It's kind of a fun, fun thing to do. Get around something that's but, gonna get you hurt. 
Yeah, well, we went we went last weekend, like Saturday, we went uh, trail riding. We we rolled like 20 miles and went to a bar, and then we rolled like another 10 miles and went to a bar. So we just kind of bar hopped on them. It's pretty fun. Nice. Only, only in Wisconsin. Yeah, we drink a lot of beer up here. Well, I know. I know you. We just had. <laughs> We just had a country fest up here, and uh, there's some guys from Florida that came up and were trying to, um, trying to, oh, drink one of my cousins, and yeah, that wasn't going to happen. They had a, a case <laughs> race, a, a 30, they had a 30, I don't even know what the hell they were drinking, but they had a 30, and they had a case race, and they said the guys from Florida had like six down, and they finished their 30s. <laughs> yeah. But we're known for drinking up here, so. Yes, yeah, that's why we're trying like to keep up time. in Illinois. Well, people, I hate to be the it's grumpy a, one that ends the party, but someone's got to end it. I gotta go to work tomorrow. We all do, I think. Yeah, well, I'm sure I have to go get my daughter, and the girlfriend's got to leave soon, so later she's here. Work. She works night shift, well, eleven to seven, so. There you go, you better take care of your dad duties. I gotta do my responsibilities. Or you get chewed out. Yep. I, she already texted me once, so. There you go. It's awesome. Just, well, it's bedtime now, right? Yeah. Yeah, what is it? I don't even know. I haven't looked at the clock in a while. It's 11 here, so it's 10 there. 10. You're wrong, Clint. It's 10. Yes, it's 11 here, so it's 10 there. No, Clint, it's 10 here. It's 10. 10 there, so it's 11 here. So it's 10 here. It's 10, Clint. Right. I've never been to New Jersey. Clint, yeah. Clint just You're gets lucky. irritated. You're lucky. I've been to Illinois and stuff, but I've never been to New Jersey. Well, come on out. I kind of checked out. Taylor ham, egg, and cheese. And uh, a big pizza pie, big slice of... Hey. Hey. How far are you actually from like New York City? Like four You're not that minutes. far, are you? No. Yeah. Where I work well, the, is like right over the river. Good. Well, that video you posted on that motocross track, yeah. like you can see like the skyline. You obviously weren't very far away then. No. In Richfield. Where were you at? Lindhurst. No, sounds made up to me. Linders Llamas. If I come out there, Clint, you're going to do uh, some comedy shows out there or what? Yeah, I do like open mics all the time at least. But then I got uh, a comedy show in uh, New York July like 28th and then September 29th, I think. I was always kind of curious. Like, I always kind of thought that would be a fun gig to try. Like... Is it really hard to create content? And like, because obviously there's so many comedians out there. Like, is it hard to not like try to overlap somebody? Like, I don't I'm, really watch anybody's comedy for the most part. No. So I don't think. Obviously, you're influenced by stuff, but I I don't watch a lot of comedy, so it's not like. And I didn't grow up watching a lot of comedy, so it's not like I have this stuff embedded in my head or I hear it all the time so I mean I think as long as you're yeah, like, picking subject matter here's the thing I have a whole set about going bald I'm sure that there are a million bald jokes whether right. people look at it from my point of view and uh, putting the spin on it that I'm putting on it I don't think that there has been yeah cause like I, I actually like watch like a lot of comedy stuff and you know what's that uh that page on facebook i forget what it's called uh dry bar comedy or whatever it is watch that sometimes and that's pretty funny but i'm like man this would always be cool because there's like i've never seen that i don't even know what you're talking about yeah it's like one of those things when you get lost in the the world of facebook and you just keep scrolling and eventually you find some random ass videos and you watch them and it was like dry bar comedy or whatever. Basically, from what I've gathered, like there's literally like no swearing in it or anything. It's just kind of like a cleaner type 
comedy because obviously some of those guys get pretty rancid. But you know, but I always watch like Larry the Cable Guy and um, you know all these different people. That There's I just thought it was pretty cool. Go with it. Yeah. It's fun. I like it. I mean, I think um, like Javier asked today, actually, and I'm like, you know, I, I wouldn't say I'm like a killer. I don't go up there and just kill, but um, I can make people laugh pretty much. When I go on stage, I can at least get a couple laughs out of everybody. So it's I mean, the Snickers. Sure. Yeah, well, no, I mean, I get, I'll get... It's not, sometimes people get up and they just killing everybody. And sometimes you have a joke that everybody laughs at. But um, I definitely, I think, it's figuring out how to generalize your jokes so that everybody understands them a lot. Right. I have made jokes about, uh, you know, like riding stuff or whatever. And a lot of times people just stare at me because they don't understand. So it has to be something everybody can grasp. And a lot of times right. people like when you poke fun of yourself as well. Yeah, you got to get something that they can grasp, you know. Like, I I don't know. I just, like, there's a local bar around here that does that type of stuff. I'm like, man, I should just, like, try to write, like, some sort of, you know, sketch or whatever you want to call it and try it out and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, I don't do, like, set-up punchline jokes. I tell, like, little... Stories? Things. Yeah, kind of. Not even necessarily stories, but I just... I don't know. I think a lot of times the punchlines is how I react to what I said or, you know, stuff like that. Not even necessarily. And then you can't tell either because some crowds laugh at this point and then some crowds laugh at a different spot, you know? So it's like things play different to different rooms and... It's even different whether you're at just a bar for open mic or you're at a comedy club where people are expecting comedy, you know, and want to laugh. Have you noticed a, have you noticed a difference from like when you started to like where you're at now? Like, you get more of a reaction. Um, I mean, I, of course, I think that. Like, are you getting better at it? Obviously? Yeah, I mean, my style is changing. I'm still so new at it that I'm sure that what I'm doing is going to evolve because I'm really like a fucking infant in the world of comedy. So for right. sure what I'm, my style and the way I write and all that stuff is going to change. So, I mean, I think it's like riding. It's like anything. You're definitely going to be learning. I don't expect myself right. to be super amazing, you know, two years in. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, cause you're always looking for that other avenue after riding like, what are you going to do? Like, I mean, could be anything, obviously, but like, um, comedy is kind of like one of those things. Like I listen to a lot of music and I listen to like a lot of comedy and stuff. Like, so yeah, I mean, I'm kind of influenced by a lot of that type of stuff. So it's like, man, if you could try it out and just see where it goes, yeah, I mean, I mean it could go, be a hit or it could be nothing, you know? Well, here's the thing. You're going to bomb sometimes. You're going to have times, it's like riding, you're going to have situations that make you go, and eh, do I really want to do this? But if you want to do it, you know, hopefully you don't bomb first time, because that would be, you know, it's like getting hurt the first time you ride a dirt bike, but... Uh, right. Then you you're just going to quit right it. there. Yeah, exactly. But you got to expect it. The first time I went was actually pretty good. The second time was rough, but I mean, I think that thing was that I understood like how to look at things from a different perspective at least to make them interesting right so what are you doing now you're like working at like some like dealership or something aren't you Clint? I work at my buddy's shop okay. some days and then I work on bikes myself at my place I do a bunch of stuff trying to get to where trying to book comedy shows around me at bars yeah, because, like, I want to get more into, like, the show scene and do stuff, like, for the, I mean, I I like to talk to, like, Cody and stuff and see, get into, like, different shows, like, and start pushing myself to get, you know, farther than I am, but. Well, you need to go, you really need to go and ride with the Gutierrez. Yeah. Because those dudes I mean, are. And they're, here's the thing, 
they're at the pinnacle of the sport. You know, Cody, yeah, he flips a quad and this and that. But, and I love Cody, he's one of my boys, but he, I'll tell you, he's not a quad dude. If you want to ride quads and be a bad dude, that's the GTA boys. You well, know, I don't even, I mean, I never really considered myself a quad guy. I always considered myself a bike guy, but, you know, now I'm kind of leaning more into the, the snowmobile thing, and that's kind of like, because there's very few people in the world that, you know, jump sleds and do the stuff like a lot of those guys the keith frisbee and those guys do so i would ride like, whatever I, you're most comfortable on. i mean right, i guess like, money, oh, is I like, a, money is a good factor but i would ride what i was most comfortable on. right and you know like, usually sleds pay pretty well you know because just from you know talking like scott and all these different guys and you know but Sleds are just they're gonna beat shit up. They really are. Like, you know, I don't. You know who Stan Rogers is? Who? Sam Rogers. Oh yeah, I know who Sam Rogers is. Yeah, well, like man, that guy has busted his ass, and I actually built his <clears throat> his flip levers for the 2011 X Games. And uh, um, but you know, sleds are just everything about them. Just is so much harder. to than a dirt bike, I mean. It's like quad, so everything's much, bigger, everything's more expensive, everything's yeah, more. Yeah, I mean, everything about it is just, I mean, it lands harder, everything about it is just harder. So, like, Sam, he's like, you know, that dude is a legend on snowmobiles, but, you know, you know, he broke his, you know, leg, you know, jump into that mobile and, you know, basically sheared the damn thing off, you know, and he's a, just like, I don't know if you ever saw that, like, he, basically hopped off the front of his sled, as far as I know, because I actually talked to him, you know, quite a bit, but um, he jumped off, and his leg bit went between his sled and the mobile and just, like, sheared it off, basically. And uh, so, yeah, I just... But he has it still, or what? What's that? Is his leg fucked? Is it gone? Well, it's there, but he, you know, basically had to put it back together. But, yeah, it, from what I remember, this was, like, a year or two ago, like probably a year ago, he like jumped off his sled because he was. I think it was up at uh, up in Montana. At, I think was it Evil Knievel days or one of those things. And he jumped off his sled because he bogged off the lip or whatever. And he jumped off and tried to land on the mobile. Got his leg between the mobile and his sled and just like sheared it off basically. Oh, I didn't just, know about that. It. But you know that guy is you know that guy's a badass on a snowmobile, but. You know, he just, it, everything is so much harder on a snowmobile. As much as I love riding snowmobiles, it's like, man, I don't really want to jump to a mobile with this thing. You know, I'll stick to a dirt bike, really. I mean, I will if I guess if I have to, but it just, they land so much harder. I mean, just a lot more weight. Yeah, it's around. You, said you, it's more expensive, it's everything. Right, exactly. But, oh, when you jump yeah, I don't know. I'm out. I am. What? Calling her quits, hey? Yeah. Yeah, we gotta go, because I gotta go to sleep. Shutting it down. We're shutting it down. Yeah, I gotta go to bed, too. You very that was a good, that was a good, uh... How long was that? Over <sighs> two hours. We're wow. at two hours and nine minutes now. You're in, you're in Moto Pimps territory at that point. I didn't think I was that entertaining of a human being, but... It was entertaining, it was a good one. I guess I'll take it. That's what happens when you drink beer. It's going to be awkward when I listen to myself in the next couple of days. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be fun. All right, Because yeah. I always feel like a goober, but... All right, so Everybody good, feels like a goober listening to themselves. Right. Well, thanks for having me. appreciate it. No worries. Come on, dude. Thanks for coming. Yeah, no problem. All right. Everybody have fun. See you next week. All right, later. Later. We're out. Toodles.